Welcome to today's Photo Minute. My name is Brian Osborne of the Photo Classroom and uh, I thought it'd be fun for us to cover uh, the different camera modes that are available to us on our camera. We talk about a lot and in fact I've mentioned it in almost every video which mode I'd suggest you be in for certain situations and we'll continue to do that but I thought uh, it'd be a great opportunity for us to talk specifically about at least what, in general what each mode does and uh, how you might actually play with that uh, a little bit of some exercises uh, that I'm going to suggest at the end of this video. Tonight uh, we actually have the manual mode class. Uh, it's one of our first publicly offered virtual classes that's going to be uh, held tonight. And I figured since we were dealing with manual mode tonight, it'd be good to talk about all four of the major modes that are on all of today's cameras. Uh, the first one that we often talk about is P for program mode. Uh, if you think about the photo triangle, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, in program mode, the camera is going to control the aperture and the shutter speed uh, for you. It doesn't necessarily know what your goals are for the depth of field or for the motion that you're recording, but it's a great mode to use in just general picture taking situations where you may not know uh, what to do with an aperture or shutter speed control in another mode, or uh, maybe you've tried something in another mode and uh, it hasn't worked very well. Uh, we often call program mode uh, just point and shoot mode. It's a great mode for us just to refer back to and sometimes the camera can just set those aperture and shutter speed combinations in a way that give us the result that we're actually going for. And so program mode is our first mode. And we often call that our uh, point and shoot mode in terms of that's our new green auto mode. Some of your cameras do have an auto green or green box mode. That's where everything is going to be controlled by the camera. And we're not going to suggest that the camera control everything about our pictures uh, because we have a nice camera. We wouldn't want to use it as just a point and shoot all the time with no control whatsoever. But what's nice in program mode is that you can still control whether your uh, flash fires, you can still control the focusing system and white balance and, and exposure. Um, but in the core of it is that in program mode, your aperture and shutter speed will set itself uh, for you. And uh, that may give you great results under uh, various situations. The second mode that uh, we often talk about is shutter priority mode. Um, on a, a Nikon camera, that's S mode or a Sony camera. On a Canon camera, it's a little bit more confusing, but it's called TV mode, and that simply stands for time value mode. That's the mode where you're going to get to control the shutter speed, and then the camera is going to, in the semi program, control the aperture for you. And, and so uh, we'll come back to that when we get to action photography, because a lot of people think that's a great mode to shoot uh, action pictures in, because you can control your shutter speed and make it faster. Um, and certainly you can do that. We're going to have some other suggestions for you when it comes to photographing motion and specifically action in general. But um, shutter priority mode is, allows you to control the shutter speed part of the triangle and the camera then controls the, re, the, the correlating aperture. The third mode, and it's by far our favorite, you may have already picked up on that in some of our videos, is aperture priority mode, A mode or AB mode on a Canon. And in aperture priority mode, you get to control the aperture. Uh, you say, well, why is it your favorite? Because in many ways, I think the coolest thing about photography is being able to control your depth of field. It's just so core to the types of pictures that we might want to create in different situations. And so um, why not be in the mode that uh, camera takes care of the shutter speed for you, but you and I get to take care of the aperture. And the aperture is so often something that we might want to um, have uh, the ultimate control over. Um, think about a portrait situation. You might want a very low aperture, throw your background out of focus. You could easily do that in aperture priority mode, as well as uh, landscape pictures. You want more depth of field maybe, and you're going to do those, or I'm going to suggest you do those in aperture priority mode as well, but with a higher aperture. So it's a neat mode where you can actually control the aperture and the camera takes care of the shutter speed. And we're actually going to show you how you can reverse that in another session and actually control the shutter speed by um, choosing which aperture you want. So we actually shoot a lot of our um, action or sports photography actually in aperture priority mode. The last mode is manual mode. In manual mode, obviously the one we're talking about in tonight's virtual class, but manual mode is the mode where you have to set the aperture and the shutter speed. You're always in control of the ISO and all of the other modes, including manual mode. But as you have to set all three numbers, first of all, the amount of work that you have to do, especially if the light's changing, uh, goes up tremendously. And you might even find that you miss a lot of pictures because you were trying to control everything at one point in time. And then the, the other thing about manual mode is that as you go to set a certain aperture and let's say a certain shutter speed, you're also controlling the amount of brightness in your picture. 
And so, um, so you're kind of walking this line between brightness and uh, the depth of field and or the motion in your images. And so um, certainly I think manual mode is more complicated. And in fact, you saw that if you follow along with our moon photography tips, we had to do the moon in uh, manual mode. And I explained why in that session. But the reality is, is that for a lot of us, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to know how to get the right exposure in our images when we're in manual mode, because we're used to the camera often taking care of the exposure for us in general when we're operating in the other three letter modes. Um, I wanted to at least give us an exercise that uh, regardless of whether this is brand new information to you or um, you're very, very familiar with what I'm describing in terms of the four modes on our cameras, uh, just two different exercises you might do just to kind of play around and maybe up your comfort level with the modes that are available to us on our cameras. The first one is to choose uh, aperture priority mode, maybe even um, shutter priority mode. And uh, you might try this outside, although I suppose you could do it inside as well. And that is take different pictures, uh, take the same picture, same subject matter, but take it at different apertures. Let's say you're in aperture priority mode, try f5.6 and try f11. And one of the things I want everybody to walk away from this is that uh, when you change your aperture in aperture priority mode, or when you change your shutter speed in shutter priority mode, um, you are not changing the actual brightness of the picture. You are changing the combination of aperture and shutter speeds that are being used, which is really a great benefit, but you're not actually changing how much light is getting into the camera. Um, in terms of how bright or how dark the picture is recorded. So for all of us, uh, sometimes we have this mindset that says, well, if I change my aperture, um, it's gonna let in more light or less light. Well, that's not really the case in aperture priority mode or in shutter priority mode. When you change that one part of the triangle that you're responsible for in those two semi-program modes, you're not really changing the brightness of the picture, you're just simply changing the combination of apertures and shutter speeds that you want to use together. So it'd be a great activity just to try different apertures and aperture priority mode, different shutter speeds and shutter priority mode, and see if uh, you get those results where the brightness of the pictures is relatively the same. Um, maybe the depth of field or maybe the motion is different, obviously, but uh, the, the amount of brightness in those pictures is the same. Uh, the other exercise, probably for all of us, is to try to take the same, very same picture in all four modes. So uh, take it in program mode, take it in aperture priority mode. Um, you might even choose an aperture that's similar to what program mode was using. Take it in shutter priority mode and maybe choose a moderate shutter speed and see how that uh, results in the image. And then finally, uh, take it in manual mode. And whether you're gonna try to find the right aperture and shutter speed uh, yourself in manual mode uh, and ISO combination, or whether you're going to uh, maybe even just take your numbers from program mode and then dial those three numbers in, the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO in manual mode, um, it'd be great for all of us just to be very sure that we can get the same image uh, regardless of which way we go about it. Um, some people choose to do it in manual mode, and sometimes we have to do it in manual mode but it can be pretty complicated to get the same result that we might have been able to get in P mode, program mode, and we could have let the camera do everything for us, or maybe aperture priority mode, and we chose our aperture, but we, the, the, we got the same resulting picture, and manual mode often is kind of doing things the harder way where we have great technology built in our cameras that can often take care of that for us. So uh, two exercises you might just want to try today. One is shooting different pictures in aperture and shutter priority mode at different apertures and or shutter speeds and just kind of confirm that the brightness of the picture is relatively the same under the same lighting conditions. And then to go to manual mode and go to all four modes, I'm sorry, and actually see if you can get the same resulting picture in terms of brightness and in terms of aperture and shutter speed combinations um, by doing so even though you're in four different modes where sometimes the camera is controlling more of the options and sometimes you're controlling more of the options. I just thought it'd be a great exercise for us to be playing with today um, just to know that there's a lot of modes on our camera and we can actually continue to fine tune those modes for different types of actual photographic situations. And we uh, have already mentioned those in a lot of our sessions. We'll continue to mention those in different situations that we'll be teaching about. Um, but it might be fun just to make sure that everybody's on the same page in terms of your understanding uh, of the four modes on our camera and what you can do with them. Uh, thank you again for joining us for today's Photo Minute. My name is Brian Osborne. I hope you have a great afternoon shooting.